Good afternoon and welcome to our series of webinars focused on bringing you information about COVID-19, infection control, and other nursing home related topics. The information in these weekly webinars is geared toward long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, but we encourage everyone who's interested to attend. My name is Kathy Caudill. I'm a communications specialist with Quality Insights. Today's webinar is Education for Nursing Homes on Sepsis Prevention uh, and Enhanced Barrier Precautions. Natasha Dickinson of Vivint Health joins us today to demonstrate their virtual learning platforms, new learning modules, which is free to Quality Insights partners and beneficiaries. Everyone has entered the meeting on mute, but we will take, be taking questions during the presentation. So if you have a question or comment, please submit them using either the chat or the Q&A tool in your Zoom menu. We invite you to join us every Wednesday for more of our weekly webinars. Next week's topic is multi-dose vials and injection safety. And if you're interested in joining, that will be the same time and place next Wednesday at 2 p.m. And now I'd like to introduce our guest today, Natasha Dickinson. Natasha has been in the nursing field for almost 15 years, working in medical surgical areas, oncology, care management, travel nursing, and senior care. As a family nurse practitioner, her primary work has been with the geriatric population, focusing on health promotion and disease prevention. Natasha is the Director of Clinical Affairs at Vivint Health. Her primary role is acting as a liaison and implementation specialist between Vivint Health and participating organizations, as well as leading all community initiatives. Natasha, thanks for joining us again today. Hi, thank you so much, Catherine. I appreciate it. Um, thank you all for having me today and taking the time to um, join us. Um, I won't take up much of your time, I promise. Um, so many of you already know a little bit about Vivint Health. Um, we are the education company that has partnered with Quality Insights to provide you with different educations. Um, right now, many facilities are using our infection prevention program and our vaccination program. Um, but I just want to kind of touch base um, on what we are, who we are for individuals who don't know about Vivint Health. So Vivint Health is a nurse-founded, nurse-led education company. We specialize in interactive education. So as Catherine mentioned, my background is in nursing. Um, and as a nurse, I've been through countless amounts of in-services and continuing educations. Um, and let's just be honest, most of the times they're boring. So what you do is you have to read something or you have to watch a video. Um, or you have to go through a PowerPoint where it's just mainly clicking. So with our company, we tried to change that trajectory of education delivery and provide education that is more engaging, more interactive, and more fun. And by doing this, not only do we have a more effective education, but we also produce behavior change. Now, when you're teaching somebody something, that's what you want at the end of the day. You don't want them just to be able to recite what you teach them. You want them to be able to take what they've learned and put it into their everyday practice. And that's what we specialize in. So we provide education on a variety of topics like infection prevention, vaccinations, chronic disease. And we're actually in over 15 states now providing our education. So our education is not only very um, engaging, it's also very accessible. So just with a simple scan of a QR code, an individual is able to access the program. So that means there's no um, particular LMS needed, no special programming. All you need is a cell phone, a tablet, or even a computer to get started. Now with that QR code, we're able to keep tracking, meaning we're able to tell who's using the program, how far they've gotten into the program, and that can be sent to the facility leaders every week. Now, as mentioned before, this learning is scientifically more effective than that traditional passive learning. So we've had great feedback from all of the users that are using our program. Um, we at least have a 95% satisfaction rate um, for individuals who've taken the program. So as I was saying, our programs are available for everyone. So it's not just for nurses, it's not for um, CNAs, it's for the residents, it's for the administration, um, the support staff. We're strong believers that it takes a village to keep everyone healthy and happy. So a little bit about the programs. So the Enhanced Barrier Precautions is a brand new program 
um, that was created to meet the needs of the new requirements um, that all nursing facilities have to have. So I know there was a lot of you know confusion about who needs EBP, when to use it. So we created a program to help make staff members more confident and comfortable with these requirements. Um, and of course, it does allow for um, you to be more compliant with CMS regulations and things like that. So a user will go through different interactive scenarios to kind of prepare themselves for a surveyor. The next program that is available to you all now is the sepsis prevention program. Now, once again, we're all about that doing. So the learner is gonna go through different interactive scenarios to learn how to first prevent sepsis and second, how to early identify sepsis. Remember with all of these things, prevention is key. So that is the whole goal of the programs is to provide a turnkey implementation tool for all your facilities to use that educates, um, but also is engaging and fun. Okay. So the EBP program, as I mentioned before, it's going to just kind of give some clarification on some things and just make it a little bit more clear on when to use it, who should we use it on and things like that. So it's gonna be interactive. So I'm gonna just kind of take you through a scenario here so you can kind of see um, how it works. Now, just like all of our previous programs, the um, we are very short when it comes to um, videos. We're all about that doing aspect. So you will see some videos throughout the program, but they're very short. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the first one. The enhanced barrier precautions pathway is crucial to stop the spread of MDROs and save lives. Let's take a look. First, identify if there is an EBP sign. Next, decide if your task will be high or low contact. Regardless of the task, always perform hand hygiene before entering. If you are doing a high contact task, place a gown and gloves on. After finishing your task, remove your PPE and perform hand hygiene again. This is the cycle that will be used each time you enter a resident's room with EBP. Remember, the same PPE should never be used on more than one resident. Okay, so just a kind of a brief intro video. So now we've learned a little bit about it. So now we're actually going to go through an interactive scenario to prepare ourselves to get into a room with EBP. So what do you do first? First, you have to read that sign. Okay. And I know with EBP that every facility has its own discretion on, you know, on certain things. And that is made clear in this program uh, multiple times that it is facility discretion with certain things. Okay, so once you read the sign, what do you do next? Of course, you gotta wash your hands or sanitize. So we're going to sanitize our hands. Now, as I mentioned before, our education is all about the interactivity. So a learner is going to be doing the entire time. And that's what really makes that behavior um, change come about. And, you know, the learning material stick to them. Okay, so once we've sanitized our hands, What's next? We need to put on our gown and gloves. So the PPE pops up. And we're gonna put on our PPE. So I know that we all know how to do this. You know, I'm sure you've all did this a million and one times, but it's all about that reiteration that really makes a difference and it really matters. All right, so after we're done, we're going to take off our gown and gloves as well. All right, and then I'm going to show you just briefly one more thing here. So next, the person is going to go through some different scenarios where they actually have to determine um, what patient requires what. So go ahead and do this real quick. So scenario one here. So we try to keep the words down to minimum. Like I said, this um, program is for all staff. 
Now with the EBP program, there's also a program that is designed for um, the nursing administration to help them be um, ready for um, a surveyor as far as making sure all the rules and regulations are met. Okay, so with this, they're gonna go through an interactive scenario where they have to choose the right decision. Okay, so what do they have to do first? Of course, they need to wash their hands. All right, and I'm gonna go through one more and then I'll show you the sepsis program as well. Okay, here. Alrighty. So let's go through another one here. So Mr. Greenleaf was diagnosed with influenza. Um, she was admitted admitted to the facility for a non-healing wound. So there's a key word right there. So we know that there's a wound. So how should you repair prepare to enter the room? So it does require some critical thinking to make a person think of what they need to do. So they're gonna have different options on what to choose. Now, since the person does have influenza, we have to remember to add that mask component as well. All right. And then after that, they have to actually put it on. So it's all about that doing aspect. Now, everything you see here is not a, um, a video or anything, this is actually me doing. All right, so any questions on the EVP program? Nope, okay. So next I'm gonna briefly show you the um, sepsis program. Do you see my new screen, Catherine, with sepsis? Yes. Okay, okay. Now with the sepsis program, we have different programs designed for each again. So we have a program that's for support staff. We have one that's designed specifically um, for CNAs. And then we have another one that's for your licensed professional staff as well. And we did this because everybody plays a huge role in sepsis prevention. And whenever a person knows their role, the likelihood of prevention and early detection is gonna be higher, of course. So once again, I'm gonna briefly show you um, a scenario. And we're all about that doing part. So we're gonna have a resident here who's had a cold for five days. Could I have sepsis? So we're going to check his vital signs to figure out if he has sepsis or not. So first we have to check the pulse. Now, this is not a video. This is actually me moving my mouse to check the vital signs. We try to make this as realistic as possible um, to really make that impact. All right, so once we check the pulse, we see that it's 102, so that's elevated. Now, if you notice here on this um, little side over here, there's zones. So as we go through each of these vital signs, this zone is gonna change based on the amount of abnormal vital signs. All right, so right now we have one abnormal. So now we're in the yellow zone. All right, next we're going to check the temperature. So what do we gotta do? Drag it to his forehead, push the button, and let's see what it is. 101.6, so we have another abnormal vital sign. So we're looking here in this zone. Now we're going to be in a red zone because we have two abnormal vital signs. Now, in this program, I'm just showing you a brief scenario here, but we do educate the learner on um, when to let the doctor know or the nurse know, um, and also how to communicate with them as well, because that's part of the problem sometimes is, you know, as a CNA, especially, or even a support staff, um, letting the nurse know that you see a problem um, and for them to recognize it. So we do try to touch on that topic as well um, because it can be a sensitive topic. Okay, next we're going to look at their mental status, which is another sign of um, sepsis. So this person is not experiencing any abnormal behavior. So what should we do next? So here's where that critical thinking comes into place. Um, so we're in the red zone. So we're either gonna do nothing or alert the nurse. 
And we all know we're not allergic to nurse. So we try to keep this, you know, as um, not too complicated, but enough critical thinking where a person is going to learn from it as well. Um, I'll show you one more here. Um, we also teach them about how to care for the resident after they come back from a hospital with sepsis. Like I said earlier, we teach them about communicating their concerns. And then we also teach about sepsis prevention. And of course, the uh, specific role. And the role part um, is gonna be unique based on whoever is taking the program. So I'll just briefly show you this video. Sepsis is a medical emergency that affects about 1.7 million adults every year. Anyone can develop sepsis regardless of age or health status. There is no cure for sepsis, only prevention. Sources of infections that can cause sepsis in a resident can start as pneumonia, a UTI, an open wound, or even in the GI tract. Remember, anyone can get an infection and any infection can lead to sepsis. As a CNA, you play a critical role in keeping our residents safe and protected. With your help, we are able to quickly recognize residents who may be showing early signs and get them the help they need fast. By completing this program, you will be equipped with the knowledge and resources to help protect your residents. All right. So it just kind of briefly shows like their role and how they can help with um, sepsis prevention. So we do use a concept in our teaching, like always, called discovery learning, where the person has to discover that correct answer. So they are, are going to basically drag the right answer. If it's in the wrong spot, it's not going to stick. They have to discover that correct answer. And that discovery learning is all part of the behavior change that we really um, focus on. All right, any questions on the sepsis program? Okay, all right, Catherine, can you pull the slides back up and I will go ahead and um, show everyone how easy it is to get started with this. All right, so basically I've showed you how um, the program works how easy it is to access. Now I'm gonna briefly show you how easy it is to get your facility started. So we've already created um, program flyers with a QR code that have um, the provide access to the programs and that will be sent to you via email. Um, I believe Catherine may have it as well for you today. It looks something like this. And all you have to do is just get that flyer printed out and distribute it to your staff. Okay, so next slide. So oftentimes I get asked the question, who can distribute this? The answer is anyone. So whenever you have any of our programs, it's not just the job of the DON, it's not just the job of the administrator, literally anyone can help get the program out. Um, all you have to do is just pass it out. So it can be emailed. You can um, have it in service to get your staff on board. And what I found through experience is that in service is the best way and most effective way to get your staff um, on board and educated about the programs. So basically, I don't recommend doing anything extra. So if you have a team staff meeting every Monday, Introduce the program at that time. Um, just take a couple of minutes, just say what the goal is, um, what the program's about. And if you have time, have them scan that QR code right then and there. Um, what I've also learned from practice is that it's important to provide a timeline. For instance, um, tell people that, you know, our goal for the month of August is to complete the sepsis program. The goal for the month of September is to complete the EBP program. Uh, by giving people um, that, that deadline, it just kind of helps create direction and helps with completion. Okay, next slide, please. So step three, each participant just scans a QR code, they register, they complete the program, that's it. 
It's that simple. Okay, next um, slide, please. So I always put in a QR code in all of my presentations just so a person can um, kind of get a feel for what the QR code looks like in the process. So if you have your cell phone handy, please feel free to scan this QR code and just so you can kind of see how the process works. Now we have tried our best to include every single nursing facility, um, but of course, no one's perfect. If there's a facility that is not on our database, you can just put it in the, the chat or you let me know and we'll add it for you. Not a big deal at all. Now, once you do scan this QR code, you're going to be on a, um, a home page that's going to ask you to either sign in or register. Now, if you have completed any of the prior Vivin programs, um, you will just sign in with your regular information. You've added all of the programs to it, so you have access to everything. If it's the new, your first time registering, you will register. It's going to ask you for your phone number, your email address, and your first name and last name. And you're going to create a um, basically a sign in login. So this will be used for any subsequent times you log in. Now, I like to always make it a point to say we do not use your information for anything other than this program. And that's just if there's a technical issue. I know there's lots of crazy people out these days with scammers and things like that. So your information is safe with our um, database. Okay, next page. All right. And after a person completes the program, this is for both programs, actually all of our programs, they always receive a certificate of completion. Now, what a lot of facilities do with that is they um, have the uh, staff member or employee print it off and then they put it in the personnel file. And that just shows that that person is compliant for um, whatever learning activity that they're doing. So God forbid a, a surveyor comes or whoever, you can say, hey, so-and-so has completed sepsis, EBP, and infection prevention. Um, and not only does this show compliance, but it also shows that your facility is proactive um, in reducing infections and safeguarding your residents and your employees as well. Okay, next page or next slide, sorry. Um, and it's not on here, but step four is you get that weekly report. So we have already um, entered all of the facility leaders names in our database. Um, if you have anyone that is registered for our program, you will automatically be getting that, um, that email every Monday at 12 p.m. Central Time. If you have registrations and you have not received an email, once again, you just let me know and we will be happy to add you onto our database. Okay, next slide. So um, with that being said, um, if you have any questions, um, if you get stuck with anything, you please just you can email me, you can text me, you can call me. Um, I'm always available to help you. Um, I want this program or all of these programs to be successful in your facility. And I don't want it to take much work from you. Um, you know, that's the whole premise of making the QR code. We want it to be convenient for everybody. Natasha, um, was there anything else you wanted to add as we wrap up? Um, nope. Um, just let everybody know that not only are you all um, have these programs available, you also have the IP program available, the vaccination program, the sepsis program, and now the enhanced barrier precautions as well. So you have a whole suite of education resources. Um, and, you know, I just really hope that you all utilize them. If you need help with anything, please feel free to reach out to me or any other quality insights team. Natasha, thank you for joining us again this week and for this great demonstration. And I'd like to thank everybody here for joining us today and hope to see you again soon.